everyone. Welcome to our YouTube channel, Online Study for You. I hope you all are well and safe. So as you all know that we have started a data structure series free of cost so that you all can get benefited by this. And obviously, you know that when it comes to placement, data structure is a very, very important subject. So I have already covered one video regarding data structure in which I discuss about the basics of data structure. And also I discuss one of the most important data structures that is array. So if you haven't watched this video, I would recommend to first complete that first video and then come to this video. So we'll be discussing about operations on array, like what sort of operations can be performed on the array in this particular video. But before this, there's a humble request from my side. Let's see. So guys, here you can see when we were analyzing our channel, you can see most of the time, most of the watching hours is from those candidates, from those students who have not subscribed our channel till now. So guys, I have to say one thing only on that, that if you are liking our content, if you are finding it useful, so why not subscribing the channel, guys? Please do subscribe. Obviously, it will be helpful for you. You can get the notification. You can get the updates about any opportunity, any tutorial or so, so that you are not missing anything. So make sure to subscribe right now as if we are putting the efforts and obviously we want that you should also put some sort of effort. So make sure to subscribe the channel right now. Well, I'm hoping that you have subscribed the channel till now. So let's move further in the video without any delay. So basically, as if I already mentioned, the main agenda of this video is to discuss about the operations on array. So let's see. Now, what sort of operations we can perform on our array? So first of all, we have traversal. In the previous video itself, I have uh, covered traversal. Traversal means to cover each and every element, to basically to visit each and every element of your array. Suppose you are having an array consisting of elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if you are visiting each of these elements, one, two, three, four, five, if you are printing them, basically, as you can see right now on the screen, so printing all the array elements, one after the another, that is known as traversal. Then we have inserting, then we have insertion. So basically, if you want to insert any element in your array, for example, you are having an array one, two, three, four, five, and you want to insert any element, let's suppose 23, it can be in the starting, it can be at the end itself, or it can be, um, in between the elements, right? In between the elements at any position. So this is known as insertion. So adding an element at a given index, that is what insertion. Then we have deletion. So if you want to remove any element from your array, so this operation is known as deletion. Next is searching. So, so let's suppose you want to find that whether a particular element is present in your array or not. Let's suppose uh, you are having elements one, two, three, four, five. You want to check that whether four is present in your array or not. So this operation of searching for a particular element is known as uh, searching, right? Then we have updation. So I've already covered about the updation in the previous video. Then what you can do, you can update the value that is present in your array. Let's take an example for this so that you can get a better understanding regarding this. For example, you are having an array ARR of integer type. Uh, you are having the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, if you want that at the, this is the 0th index, this is 1st index, this is 2nd, this is 3rd, this is 4th. Now, you want that at the 1st index, instead of 2, I want 22. So, how you can update the value? Simply mention the name of your array. Then, you have to mention the index where your element is stored. So, 2 is stored at the 1st index. So, ARR of 1 equal to 22. So, this is how you can update the value that is present in your array. Right? I hope... All the operations is clear to you. Now let's see that how basically we are going to implement them. So traversal I've already covered and obviously when we'll be printing the elements, you can get the idea regarding this. So let's discuss about the insertion in an array now. Well, talking about insertion, so it can be a case that a user want to insert any element at beginning, right? At beginning, at the end, or at any particular index, right? So let's understand this, that uh, like what kind of algorithm are going to are we going to use for implementing this insertion operation in the array? So let's suppose we are having an array, ARR of integer type consisting of elements, um, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, right? Now, what are the indexes associated with them? So this is a zero index, first index, second, third, fourth. I have already told you that indexing always starts from zero in the array. Now, 
in terms of position so what user will call it so this is position 1 position 2 position 3 position 4 position 5 now if user want to insert an element here okay if user want to insert an element at the second position so as you can see right now on this position 12 is stored so obviously it's not like that you are going to overlap the value you have to shift this 12 so that you can put the a uh, value that user want to insert let's suppose he want to insert 22 so how we can do so so first of all you have to shift these elements you have to shift these elements here in the right side so how this can be done that first of all you have to shift this let's suppose let me draw this in this manner we are having an arr let's suppose at the compile time we have mentioned that it can hold 25 elements but it's not like if you have mentioned 25 elements then always you have to store 25 elements according to your requirements you can store the elements so we are having 11 12 13 14 15 and further these are empty right so first of all what you have to do obviously you cannot 12 shift directly here because here 13 is present so what you will be doing first you will be shifting this 15 to this index so this is 0 1 2 3 4 5 fifth index so on fifth index or you can say basically on the length what is the length of this array 1 2 3 4 5 you are shifting this element 15 so 15 will be here now this is this is space is empty this index is empty so here you will be shifting 14 right now this 14 has gone this is empty so you can shift 13 here now this 13 has gone so this is empty so you can shift 12 here so 12 is shifted now so this index where we want to insert a value that is empty now so what you can do at this particular index so for example user has given position 2 right so obviously position 2 if you will be writing arr of was equal to 22 so that won't work obviously because in indexing in terms of indexing we always start it's from zero so in terms of index that is what position that is first position so you have to write arr position minus 1 equal to 22 so 22 will be inserted here right now here are some cases that you also check on for example if user is giving some position like zero so that will be an invalid position if user is giving some position for example uh, you can see as of now this array is having how many elements five elements so if user want to add something at the end that is valid like here if you if you want to add some element let's suppose 35 that is valid but let's suppose he is giving a position for example user is saying position 7 but you can see if user want to insert something at position 7 it means 1 2 3 4 5 6 Five, six, seven. It means here. So he is leaving this particular block. Or let me show you from here itself. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. User is saying that I want to insert something here, but this block is empty, right? And we always know that in array elements are stored in a contiguous manner. It is based on the concept concept of contiguous memory allocation. So you cannot leave any block empty. You cannot leave any index empty, as if in the case of this one. So you have to check for this that if the position given by user is less than equal to zero, or position is greater than that of size of like greater than that of n plus one. I am writing because n is what n is size of this. Uh, array. Let's suppose n like here. N is what? N is equal to five. So if user want to add something at the end, that is at the fifth index. Uh, that is okay, right? That is valid, obviously. But if he is uh, saying that something after this position, you can see this space is empty, and user is saying I want to add something at eighth position, ninth position. So obviously that is not valid because it's violating the concept of array to have the contiguous memory allocation. So that is not allowed. okay so i hope now you must have understood the flow the concept the approach so as if approach is clear to you let's write some code so that you can get a proper understanding of the same so we are having an array a right and at the compile time we have mentioned that okay so this can hold uh, 25 elements as of now we are putting 11 12 13 14 these five elements to this array right let me draw in this manner as well 
14, 15. This is zero index, one index, second, third, fourth. Now what user is saying, user is saying to insert an element at position second, it means here. So let me write the loop. So we'll be doing int i equal to n minus one. Now what is n? n is the size of this array. So what is the size? n equal to five because it consists of five elements. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that is what you have to mention. Then you must have noticed that what we were doing from this, from the rightmost side, we were shifting the elements, right? Then we will run this loop up to the time. This position minus one, i minus minus. Now what we'll be doing? Okay, so we'll be doing a of i plus one equal to a of i, right? That is what we have to do for the shifting purpose. Let's understand what is basically happening. So i equal to n minus one, n is what? Five, five minus one, that is four. So i equal to four, i greater than equal to position is what? Second, which is provided by the user. I greater than equal to one. Now what we are doing, a of i plus one means uh, four plus one, that is five. So we want that a of five, at a of five, we want to store the element that is stored at the a of i th position, that is a of four. So basically we are shifting this 15 here. Now i value will be decremented, that is going to be three. Now we are doing a of four. At a of four, we are storing the element that is presented a of three. So here 14 will be inserted. Now i value will be decremented, that is going to be two. So at a of three, we are inserting the element presented a of two position. So that is a of 13, like 13 will be stored here. Now i will be decremented, that is going to be one. One greater than equal to one, obviously the condition is true. So we're storing 12 here. Now I will be further decremented. That is going to be zero. Zero greater than equal to one. Condition is false, obviously. So we will come out of the loop. So now you can see this position is empty because we have shifted 12 here. Right? We have shifted 12 here. So what we can do here, here what we can do, here we can insert the element that we want to put. Right here we can insert the element that we want to put as if we have stored all our elements. So what we'll be doing after coming out of this for loop, A of position. So you can see position given by user is what two, but the indexing is what one. So you have to write A of first minus one equal to element that user want to insert. Let's suppose 22. So you will be writing 22 here. So that 22 will be stored here. So this will be the resultant array that will be getting. So as you can see, you have added one extra element. So what is the length of the array now? One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that is six now. So what you will be doing, you will be incrementing the size of array. So that will be, you will be doing n plus one. Okay, and at the last, simply you can print the elements to, to check whether you are getting the expected output or not. So I hope the insertion operation is clear to you. So now let's see the C code of the same so that you can get a proper understanding of the same. So first of all, uh, int n, that is what? This is the uh, like array elements that user want to provide. So let's take this array size as input from the user, ampersand n. Now we have to take array elements as input from the user. So for this, we have to run a loop. I less than n, scan f, ampersand d, and ampersand err of i. Right, so we have taken the array elements as input from the user. Next, what we have to do? So let's do one thing that before doing this shifting and all, let's print the array elements. So print f array before insertion array before insertion so again we have to take a for loop for printing purpose so let me copy it from here so yeah here it is now instead of scan f i will be writing print f and yeah so that is what we have done we have printed the array elements now we want the position where user want to enter the Array elements. Also, what next we want is the element that he want to enter. So scan f percent d percent d. Let's take ampersand position is done. 
now we have to take element as well so we have done this now here you have to check one thing that if position is less than equal to zero or position greater than n plus one right so what you have to do simply you have to print as invalid invalid position invalid position right otherwise we'll be following the same uh, logic or the approach that we just discussed so we'll be taking a for loop here we'll be initializing the i value to n minus 1 then i greater than equal to okay i greater than equal to position minus 1 then i minus minus then we have to do the shifting so arr of i plus 1 equal to arr of i that is what we have to do and after coming out of the loop what we have to do arr of position minus 1 equal to element that user has given so element and at the last we'll be printing our array elements to confirm that whether element has inserted or not so let's do this and here let me add one new line fine so okay one more thing that after insertion i already told you that what will happen um, array length is going to increase so that is what also you have to do okay. so we'll be doing n plus equal to one here okay, here semicolon is missing let me put this and here let me write array after insertion semicolon and now let's run our code so let's suppose we are having five elements one two three four five okay so this is our array before insertion then i want to insert element at second position the element is 22 so you can see we are getting 1 22 2 3 4 5 now if i want to insert an element at the beginning itself so what i'll be doing um, Let's suppose our area consists of five elements again. Then I'll be mentioning position as one and 12 I want to insert. So you can see we are getting 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I'm giving any invalid position, let's suppose array consists of two elements only, one, two. I'm giving position as zero and 23 is the element. So you can see we are getting invalid position. Now, if user just want to insert an element at the end, is it mandatory to go through this loop and all? No, right? What you can do, what you can do is simply, okay, let's remove all this. This for loop part. So you know that at the last position you want to insert, then it means simply you have to do ARR of n. Okay, ARR of n equal to ELE. That's it. And you have to simply implement the size. Let's try it once so that you can get a proper understanding of the scene. So, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. And user want to insert at the end itself. It means what will be the position? One, two, three, four, five. At the sixth position, he want to enter, right? So, Six I am giving as the position. Uh, let's suppose you want to insert 12. So you can see for inserting at the last, you don't have to do anything. Just by writing a simple a statement that I just wrote, you can simply do the insertion. That is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12 has been inserted. Right. Now talking about the time complexity. So what will be the time complexity? You can see we have gone through a for loop and we are shifting the element. So the time complexity will be we go off and for the insertion in the array maybe it's for the beginning or anywhere at a particular index in the array but if user want to insert the element at the end then what is the time complexity we go of one because you can see directly we have wrote just one single statement and we inserted the element okay so i hope the insertion in the array part is clear to all of you in the next video we'll be discussing that how to delete an element in the array thank you for watching this video keep providing your love and support to this series so that we can make more such amazing video for you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.